Tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Uh, how do you uh, deal with that channel? So, creative block. Mga bashers, mga negative comments dyan. So, how do you deal with that? Ikaw, Bettina. Well, alam mo, luckily, kasi nga siguro ako, yung very quality din siguro yung circle of influence ko. They're, they're such a supportive community. Swerte ako na hindi pa yun nangyayari to me. I mean, not to say that's not, especially with how vocal I am now, it's bound to happen, alam mo yun. But for me, when that when it comes to negative comments, I hope I say I I seek criticism. Eh. As a person, I'm always looking in fact for criticism because I always think that criticism is really an avenue to learn and to improve and to grow as a person. So if somebody can school me or you know, and somebody can can give me constructive criticism that I think you know that has a point, then I really take it and I really take it to heart. Because for me. I'm just on a quest to improve. I, I'm on a quest to evolve as a person, as an influencer, per se. Or like, really just as a human being, I'm just really out here to do better. So I'm not so afraid of people's criticism. I'm not that thin-skinned when it comes to things like that. Pero may mga taong... What do I, how do I say this? Yung criticism isn't criticism, but it's more an insult. And there will always be people like that. More often than not, they don't have the guts to say it to my face. And that's because they know the criticism doesn't make any sense. And they know that it's not a real criticism. So the fact that I know they can't say it to my face should already tell me, I should not be If you don't have the guts to tell me straight up, if you think, you know, whatever you think of me, then to me, your opinion shouldn't matter because you don't care enough about me to help me improve. But if it's coming from a place of like concern and and love and you know, I'll listen. I'll try naman talaga to listen. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not really afraid of criticism. In terms naman of blocks in, in creativity, for me, it's so hard to actually be inspired, like what Isabel said. Because when you travel, it's like a building, it's a building, it's a church, it's a road. It's like, right? It's like the walls are just beautiful. But it's kind of hard to say that, of course, you're locked in the same place. It really pushes you to be creative. So for me, when I'm in a creative funk or I don't really know what to post, I don't really see anything wrong with trying to seek inspiration one from other people two from like things that you've already experienced in the past so i'll go back to my old travel photos or i'll go back to my old um experiences or going out with my friends and stuff like that because it reminds me of a time where i was oozing with creativity and sometimes that's all that it takes kind of you know spark that creativity again uh yeah so for me like it's seeking inspiration from other people and it's seeking inspiration from my past experiences when I'm in a like in a funk and I like, experience a block. And just to summarize, when it comes to bashers, siguro it will be good to have blinders. Parang alamin mo at make sure you can discern which criticisms are worth listening to. And if they are worth listening to, don't be afraid to take it. It doesn't mean you know you're any less of a person. Nobody's perfect. Take it and take it as a chance to improve. But if it's some kind of criticism that's obviously just meant to kind of push you down and it's coming from someone that doesn't really care about you, forget about it. These people aren't going to be in your life and they're not going to bring anything good to your life anyway. So, bye. You know, just like... That's so true. Um, what are some of the challenges you uh, face? Lalo na kasi pag ikaw, you're a journalist, so mga creative blocks. Paano ba? Kasi ako personally, ang hirap kayo maging writer. So paano ba yung mga um, writing mga articles, articles na yan? So, uh, mga creative blocks and like yung mga negative comments as well. Sige. I'll start first with the content creator side of things. For me, um, it's trying to keep yourself consistent with your presence kasi online. And as of late, I've been trying to dab on vlogging na rin. And for the past month, wala ko na-upload at all. Kasi parang na-promise ko sa sarili ko, I'll try to upload something every week para lang, you know, just to keep my presence online going. But last month, parang I was like, mm, parang I didn't, it's not that I didn't, 
like wala akong gana. It's more of I'm not as demotivated. I'm not as motivated rather kasi like you don't want to push yourself from from posting something kung hindi mo naman talaga feel eh. Parang if you persuade yourself into this idea that it isn't exactly parang what's the use of being a content creator kung hindi ka naman authentic. Personally, that's my that's my stance on things eh. If it's not really you, then why would you bother promoting it? Kasi parang hindi mo lang niloloko ang mga viewers mo, but you're also, um, niloloko mo rin sarili mo. So, I really try to keep myself in that creative line. And it's okay to rest. Parang dun ka lang din na-realize na okay lang din magpahinga to take your time off of social media because burnout is real eh. The, like, especially with my line of work, sobrang real na you just feel so overwhelmed with the things that social media keeps feeding you, lalo na in this line of work. So, I realized that it's okay to take a rest and once you feel creative again, like when those juices come again, that's when you start grinding and going back to work. And for the journalistic side of things, as you can see dito sa, sa slide natin, one of the challenging things that I have had to write about was actually my master's thesis. My master's thesis was um, is actually a story about my lawless twin sister who went to Chicago in the 1960s and she literally dodged death. So this story was published on Vice Asia and what makes it so challenging is that it's a story so personal to me na parang okay, I'm so used to writing about this and that and this and that. But once I got to the story about my family, parang I thought it was something so personal that I wanted to give justice to the side of my lawless twin sister na parang, um, how was she able to survive this tragedy? Kasi, um, with this story kasi, um, she left it untold. She hasn't told the story to anyone for 54 years. And ngayon niya lang na-open up sa akin. This was actually done last year. And she was so game to do it. So, I was telling her, Tita, I don't want to push you if you really don't want to say anything. But she was like, no, I'm comfortable with it. It's okay. Feel free to write anything. Ask me anything about it. So, what I did was, I flew to Chicago in October last year. And oh, wow. it was her, sir, right? Yung kaming dalawa. This was actually the site where she courted and dodged death. So it was like a mind blowing. Oh Our family, this incident could have changed entirely for my family. And as a journalist, hindi ako pwede magpadala sa emotion because you have to be as objective as possible, even if it's such a subjective topic for me to write about. So I think that was such a huge challenge for me since yun, I wanted to give justice to her story and to what happened 54 years ago. And thankfully, it was okay. Um, I submitted it to my school. Submit ko rin sa Vice yung article ko. And even my lawless twin sister saw it. And she was really happy about it. Very challenging, I think, for me. Kasi um, when I, you, you know, you have to do back research. You know, it, it's a crime. It's a murder. It's, so, ang dami. It, it's a lot of things. And I've never done investigative journalism in my entire life. So, you know, just doing the research and going back to history and how everything happened. Talagang na-overwhelm ako, parang umiiyak ako na parang, oh my God, this could have been my lawless twin sister. Buti na lang hindi. Parang I just had to keep myself together since of course I had the deadline and all. And I wanted to be as um, objective as possible when tackling this. So I'm happy that I was able to surpass the challenges in writing that article in. I think I really, I want to do something like that again. I guess in this line of what I'm doing, the journalism industry, it kind of brought out uh, what I didn't think I could do. Parang may potential pala na hindi ko nakita ever since I've been doing lifestyle travel for a couple of years now. So, I'm glad it brought me out of this challenge. Uh, but, um, thank you for sharing your story. No? Very, uh, medyo, parang mahirap siya pagdaanan, no? Kasi, personal yes. story. Kasi, a family related sa family yun, eh. And, medyo, um, traumatizing ang nangyari sa article na yun. So, I'm so, uh, galing na. You were able to go through it. And, I like how you said nga, pag journalist ka, hindi ka pa rin um, dal- dalhin sa emotions. Like yung, you yeah. have to separate your emotions from what you're, uh, um, give one advice, how do you feel good about yourself? When it comes to taking care of myself, it's only very recently that I actually started working out. I've never been comfortable with my body. Kasi when I was younger, um, I was really skinny. As in like skinny, scrawny child talaga. 
and then puberty hit and suddenly I was big boned and you know I was like full body and it was just really like a sudden change and I didn't know how to adjust to it so I've always grown very to be very insecure with my body I've never really been comfortable in my own skin I've often heard parang ah parang mag parang may chula siya pero medyo chubby I've always heard that and I kind of just I kind of just embody that medyo like I lived, I lived it, you know, and I, I just believed it and just thought, you know, yeah, maybe I'm just like the funny, um, hardworking, magaling sa school, my hitchwear girl. I never really thought of myself as someone who could be fit or besides, it was never easy for me to even get into a fitness room. But recently, I've been taking that more seriously for my mental health and physically, just feeling more comfortable in my own skin actually feels amazing like just being in control of my own body and seeing what it can do i mean syempre kasama na din dun yung benefit ng pumapayat ka pero that isn't like the only point for me it's like, being able to take care of my body and you know knowing that this is mine this is my skin this is the body i live in this is you know my home it feels good to be able to take care of that so physically like my routine now is i really try to sweat or like get a workout in at least like five six times a week whenever you have time for people who are intimidated by it girl guys gets ko kayo i'm i was just playing that so if you want to do it on your own so hey okay. going to isabel no uh i think ikaw, ikaw naman like kibiti na kayo siya gusto na ikaw naman ano bang mga routine mo are like i'm sorry if you have to give like an advice uh top one ano routine mo na to maintain like feeling good about yourself for the set. Okay, but you're too big eh. So, <laughs> 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 <It's laughs> what's the routine? Because I'm not like ask my friends and family like if they offer water to me, ako talaga no. As in no talaga. I'm more of a juice, um, cocktails, milk kind of person. Pero itong quarantine lang talaga ano tuto na uminom ng tubig. Kaya siguro nag, nag-hear din yung balat ko. Because yeah, I can't stop oh. empty water. <laughs> Look what you've been seeing now. I always have this water with me. I literally can't live without it anymore. As for physical aspects naman, um, I've given myself parang this quarantine bucket list of a sort na even if I'm just at home, I want to achieve a couple of things. And one of them is working out. Since um, I felt like I was at my heaviest around February, March, parang I took on a trip in Edinburgh. Tapos pag-uwi ko sa Oh my gosh, ang bigat ko. Like it was just so terrible. And you know, the pandemic happened and I had to fly back home to the Philippines from the UK. So I said, "Okay, I'm going to add working out to my fitness uh, bucket list of a sort." And I realized that it was also my way of coping through this entire ordeal for everyone since you know, when you work out kasi you release uh, medyo nag napasayans, you release endorphins kasi or happy hormones. So it really makes me feel feel good after I do a cardio workout or sometimes a dance work. I'm just so blessed to be surrounded by my family here and my three dogs. I have three poodles here at home na super hands-on ako na sa pag-alaga. And um, it's a matter of surrounding, like what I said, surrounding yourself with love, whether it's through your family, your friends, physically, or say through the virtual. Go up, yes. Or the Love conquers all. Like I super love agree. Conquers all. When everything else fails, love will always conquer everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is actually our viewers out. This is a well as a long distance relationship, guys. So, para yes. all the fun, guys. So, sabi before we went on live, ang hirap kaya noon, de ba? Like yung pagka and it's really yeah. we have this man digital world that we really keep in touch with the people we love, even if we're um, distancing from people. Talaga. Thanks for everything that you've said, no? From sa yun naman, coming from a perspective of like a journalist and a social media specialist, and also a um digital content creator. Kaya nito lawa, digital content creator who have really influenced those who follow you both and really maganda yung comment kasi we barely hear these um, opinions like your advices na um, what you really share to the public coming from what you guys do so thank you again so thank you for joining V81 Radio so ayan so um, thank you again to Isabel and Bettina for joining me today's Express Yourself episode so I hope you enjoyed your time here on V81 Radio and I hope our viewers did too Stay tuned for the next episode only here on V81 Radio, Manila.